What is up, everybody? It is Tyler with Mom's Basement MMA. I have a very special guest with us today. Joining me on the show, we have Taylor Turner. She is a 135-pound bantamweight with Bellator MMA. She's got a huge fight at Bellator 271 against Valerie Lareda coming up on November 11th. She is out of Knoxville MMA. Um, my good friends down there. Uh, it's, so it's always good to be back in in Knoxville, in a, in a way, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had your boy Dre Miley on my show several times, Taylor. But first and foremost, I have to ask, how are you feeling right now? We got a big fight coming up. I always like to start there. I always like to try to get a pulse check on how your camp's been, how your teammates have been, and just how you're feeling. You know, I am feeling really good. Obviously there's nerves involved and all that stuff. And it's, it's kind of exciting because this is life out on the edge. This is living. This is what we ask for. This is how it is. But when you're out here, sometimes it's like, Oh my gosh, do I know enough or, or I have to work harder, but at the same time, trying to take a step back and enjoy the whole process and then cut weight, cutting weight. There's always that too. But overall, I feel like just want to get there and do this. I just, I'm excited. How are you handling? um, You touched on something. You've talked about this in prior interviews And it's something that I identify with. Obviously, I'm not an athlete, but like I have an anxiety disorder. That's something that I've been dealing with um, for for a while now. And there are like things that I have to do to like bring myself down. And I'm trying to think of it in the sense in like the perspective of an athlete, like making the walk, just like the anxiety of Mm -hmm. like waiting to fight somebody that wants to hurt me, um, training, just there's a whole different level of it that you go through and you've, you've hit on this in in other interviews. I just kind of wanted to ask how, like from a mental aspect, like what is your approach going into this one? So kind of earlier in my pro career, especially, um, you know, I, that's kind of when some of the pressure started to get on. Like at first I went pro, just like, I want to be a pro athlete. Like I'm just going to have one and then be done. And then it's like, but I enjoy competing. I wanted to do more, but that's kind of when some of the pressures got on of, uh, that I put on myself a lot of the times of, um, I gotta be famous and make money and do all that kind of stuff. And that's when my anxiety kicked in a lot more with the cage fight. And you can totally see that in my, my, a lot of my fights, they just took a bad turn and didn't even show up half the time. Um, and that, you know, you leave the cage, be like, wait, no, no, I'm ready. And it's like too late. It's over. Like you had your shot. So starting back then we worked a lot, my husband and coach, like we have a mental skills class here. I'm sure Grace kind of talked about it before where we've read all kinds of books. So, and it's, so it's, it's a long process over years. Um, and, and in that I started to learn how to kind of reshape my energy. You know I mean? When you have those emotions, like the, the butterflies in your belly and the tingling, it, those are also the things you experience when you have something great. You know, like when I was walking down the aisle to marry my husband, I had those same feelings, but it was pushed into the positive zone. Sometimes your brain just pushes it one way or the other, and it's either can freeze you or not. So we worked a lot on reframing, relooking at things and how we how we use our energy and looking at it more positively. Um, so I did that. And I feel like I had some good successes for a little while. And then somewhere along, I was like, all right, good. No more anxiety. I'm done. I've, I've accomplished that. The problem is the demons and the dragons don't go away. They, they stay there um, and ignoring them doesn't doesn't do it. So it's a lifelong battle to recognize that they're there and to keep going. So in the meantime, um, I've since the, the Laura fight when I kind of got all that stuff again, I realized I can't just stop working on that. So um, some more books I've got a, a download on my my phone, this thing called Flow Lab. And it's really great for everybody, but athletes and it's just daily things on how to refocus your brain. So I've been working on on that a lot. Absolutely. And I think, you know, anxiety in a, in a way can be a double edged sword. In, in a sense, it can be good. Like there a little bit of like nervousness, a little bit of anxiety. I think that's completely normal. And like anybody whether you're going on a job interview or in your case, going to beat up somebody in, uh, mm-hmm. for money, um, like everyone's going to encounter some anxiety and some nervousness and you can channel that for positive energy, but there can get to a point where it becomes too much. And, you know, I can pour this can of seltzer water in a cup, but that cup only has so much space. And then once it's filled up, where's it going to go all over the place? And, um, you know, it's something that, I have uh, been trying to deal with in my life and, you know, I heard about, it was in UFC, I I don't remember the fighter's name, but 
there was a guy he was supposed to fight and then he had like an anxiety attack and like they called the fight and i felt yeah. really bad for that guy and i i would imagine we are only hearing about that because it's the ufc it's such a big stage but i'm sure that type of thing happens typically i mean i'm sure you've well, we seen have it a yeah, you know, we have our promotion, Valor, uh, fighting t as well, like here locally. And so being on that side of it, we've, we've not a ton of people, but you run through people who, oh no, I all of a sudden have their elbow hurts really bad and they can't perform. And, you're, and, and you know what it is. Right. Um, it's just that in your brain. It's amazing. It, it really shows the connection between your brain and your body and how things just can melt down and you don't have control over it sometimes. And I wish, like, it's hard to describe, like, I, 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 if you've never had an anxiety attack, I don't know how to describe it. All I can say is like, in a way, like you feel like your heart's going to pound out of your chest. Your palms are sweaty. You feel like barfing. And then like when it's, and then like you're breathing a lot. And then when it's over, you have this like massive headache that you just want to <laughs> go away. That's the best way I could describe it. Um, it's a real thing. And um, shifting gears a little bit, we're talking, um, you know, just about the local scene in Knoxville in general. Knoxville MMA, it seems like a very special place. And in, in, in the past, just talking with Dre, he talked about how, how tight the team has been. Um, just, he, he talks just about like, I wouldn't be where I am today without my teammates and them pushing me. I think we really help each other get better. It's a really special place. Can you talk a little bit about just the ladies, just the uh, that are at the gym, the, the the guys that you train with? Like, how have they helped you along in your career as it's unfolded all these years? Oh man, how much time do you have? <laughs> like, um, I could be long winded, but I, if there's an area that I can't talk enough about, it is my team and I might even get teary eyed some of this because I yet again the flashbacks from where we started in the first fights and just because to where we are now um how many people have kind of come and gone but people like Dre who we've been in this you know since, since the beginning right. and um you know how supportive everybody is and and I do have to give credit to our head coach and I, I'm biased I know he's my husband <laughs> but there's reason he's my husband um he sets the tone for our gym for that like we, we have a hierarchy because that's important and there's the alpha, but app, you know, and it goes down, but there's a level of respect that we set up and it doesn't mean we don't ever, we've never run into issues before things. And, um, but that's it. We take things head on and, and do it. But even in this fight camp, so I'll kind of give it a rundown. We're cleaning out our warehouse. We're having belt testing this week for all of our classes and everything. And they could really use me. You know, I'm one of the coaches. I'm charged own help own the building with my husband and um, that kind of stuff. But instead of me doing stuff, they're like, Let's rearrange all the schedules so we can focus on helping Taylor. Who gets to be where, when? I mean, it's all those those other things that people don't see that everybody slides into the role. And one of the beautiful parts of it is most of them are high-level fighters too. You know, I mean, Emily King and Jason King and, you know, Chris Adcock, James Scott, like the people that are swinging into the supportive position at the bottom who have been on the top. They've been in the limelight. They've been the like the – we call them the show pony at that time. It's your turn to be the show pony. Right. Dre, like all of those guys, they have no problem sliding to the bottom for less lack of better words to help hold you up when it's your turn. Like there's no animosity or jealousy. And I think that is, is just so critical and you can feel it here. So, you know, that that's the biggest part I'd say. And then, you know, times when I have crashed and fallen and I, the world is sending me mean messages you know obviously as you get to the bigger stage you, your name's out there people are like you suck your life you should never step in the cage and my team sure. was like no show up be here we love you you know and punch me in the face work harder at it i'm gonna choke you out here so you don't get choked out again in there and they're like okay <laughs> you know it, it, taylor it's funny that you say that because just in doing a show and putting shows out there and putting stuff on youtube like most by and large it's been an overwhelmingly positive experience but there's always going to be that asshole like like some <laughs> some loser uh that has nothing better to do but talk about my appearance or how i talk or how i sound like i could look like tom cruise right and someone's still gonna talk give me shit for that like you can't please everybody and I never really, the, the only, like, when it comes to, like, negative interactions, the only time I ever respond to people are, like, the spammers. Like, if they spam my page and, like, <laughs> try to sell me Bitcoin, like, I'll talk shit to them. But, like, the, <laughs> but, like, the haters, I just don't deal with. But I look at it, 
And it's easier said than done. I mean, I can't compare myself to a professional athlete. Like, your your stage is completely different from mine, but I still get a lot of shit occasionally. And I look at it this way. I'm like, you don't have the balls to do what I'm doing. You couldn't if you tried. And um, I, you're just some anonymous person behind a keyboard. Like, you would never say this stuff to my face. Um, so I just don't, I don't give a shit. Like, I just don't care. I don't care. I, I 100% and, don't care. And you're completely right. And, I, and I'd say, especially since you've, you've had those moments of anxiety before and stuff, that's something you probably had to work through too. And it doesn't matter if we're not in the exact cage, so to speak. You right. are putting yourself out there in the limelight. So it is the same. You know, it is, you still have to fight down all those. Um, I read a quote the other day and I kind of live by it whenever I start to get down. And it's like, um, if you learn to walk on water, the you know haters and people say it's just because you don't know how to swim. So there will always be somebody out there to say something. Absolutely. And you have a story like when I look at your career just at large and I look at just all the shit you have been through. And I'm just talking about just let's just focus first on like the paper. (laughs) You look at the paper, right? Your career starts off great. And then you go on a skid and like I'm not talking about a couple fights. I'm talking like you're at this for years and you keep going and you're in the red, things aren't going well. In other interviews you've done, you've been like, yeah, a lot of people are like, you know, hey, listen, you've already, you can, it's okay to stop. You can do something else. Yeah. Like you don't have to compete. It's okay. How did you know that there was a light at the end of this tunnel that you were going through? Because so many people would have given up. The truth is, you know, when you are in the dark like that at times, you don't know. I mean, and that's where the faith lies. And I don't know where my path is going to go. Like you're supposed to set goals and do all that. But it was, I told, I tell people and I tell a lot of our fighters, I get this, this unique perspective also that helps me be a coach at times, but just look in the mirror and every day, if you have to, and ask yourself, there will be a day when you say, no, I'm done. And I just ask yourself, is today the day I'm done? If the answer is yes, then you're done. Then, okay, move on, go to the next step. If the answer is no, I don't feel like I'm done. If there's a shred of you that wants to do it, okay, well then put your clothes on and and go do what it's going to do until that day says no. So that's helpful. But Yet again, I couldn't have done it without the team and the family and, and you know, my coach, husband, all the people that, that are there to hold you up when you are in those dark places. Because, yeah, there's times where I'm like, I'm not going to the gym. Like, sure. I just, you know, like cried afterwards. Like, I, it was embarrassing. I'm embarrassing the team. Sure. And that's probably the hardest part. You know, the team had to tell me, like, you're not embarrassing us. Like, you went, you went out there and you did it. Right. So, I, yeah, there, sometimes it's not, there's no light to see. It's just that small voice that tells you one more step, one more step. But it's usually those people that love you most that are the ones that are the voices that, that are telling you. So surround yourself with good people and you can do anything. If you don't you keep bad company, you keep people want to hold you down, keep people want to ride your coattails or whatever it is, you're not going to get there because as soon as you do hit the hard times, they're the ones that will drag you back down. I had um, Billy Swanson on my show uh, yeah. last week. I love that guy, and um, he's so he's kind. <laughs> he's so kind. He's so nice. But I'm bringing him up because he uh, coaches amateurs and he goes to their fights all over Tennessee and then the South. And he said something that really stuck with me, and it was just something I never expected to hear from a coach. And he was just like, "I tell my fighters." I don't give a crap if you win or if you lose. Like, I want you to go out there and come. I'm paraphrasing him, but basically he's yeah. like, he, he's basically saying you rose to the challenge. You went out there, you did your best. And I know that sounds cliche and maybe soccer mom-ish, but he's just like, you went in there, you put yourself in the fire and you're going to come out even better. So if you lose, that's okay. Like we learn, we lose or we learn and there'll be more fights. That's basically what he said. He's just like, I'm not going to like somebody's worth isn't, it doesn't rise and it doesn't plummet based off of what somebody's record is or if it's a, a W or an L. Like, that doesn't take anything away from everything it took to get in there because most people don't. And it just yeah. it, it really, it was just a really eye opening experience uh, having him on the show and hearing him say that because it was the first time I've ever had a coach talk like that. And for, like, when you talk about adversity, other Amis or people who have like, gone on the competitive scene and it doesn't work out for them like let's just say they start off oh and five i'm sure you've like encountered those people like what are some of the things that you tell them like f- based off of your past experiences like oh yeah it is and yet again i mean you're you're out there in the limelight a lot and i mean 
statistically speaking, it's easier to get into the NFL. I'm not saying I can make it to the NFL. I'm not challenging them. They're amazing athletes, all the above. But statistically speaking, it's easier to make it there than it is to the you know UFC or Bellator cage or um, you know the big shows that are out there. So it it's rough. And I would say though that you know, my my trajectory, where God has brought me and long all this, it does make me be able to go to all of our athletes then and say, look. I've had the worst record in the gym. I was like, you know, the first girl competitor essentially here and all that stuff and came up and all these other people. And after a while, it's like, yeah, I fell to the the bottom. And kind of like I said before, though, I mean, you got to figure out why, you know, it, it isn't working out for you mentally, physically. Sometimes it might take years. But the thing is, do you want to get better in it or not? You know, mentally, physically, whatever it may be that's holding you back or creating you to lose at that time you just got to be willing to really bite down and say, you want to do it. You know, I'm a marathon runner and everything. So I uh, associate a lot of things to that. And it's, it's easy to start the race in general, like you get excited and you're all whatever, but there's definitely times when you're like, what am I doing? Like, why right. am I here? And you really have to have like, when you're pushed to those, those exhaustion and, and those limits, it really um, makes you have to like dig deep inside and ask yourself why you're here. And if you can't answer those questions, you're not going to get the answers. Um, and that's not everybody's thing, but, but that's mine. And, and that's what I tell a lot of the people that I've seen come through that are, you know, doing the same thing, like have a losing record or, or whatever. So, and there are some that you're like, well, you absolutely have to work on your jujitsu. You have, I mean, you know, worked on this or, you know, there's physical parts of it as well, the game plan stuff. But um, I'd say in this sport, a lot of it is, is very mental. I would say covering it is too. I like yeah. I, I just started this not that long ago, uh, and that'll be a story for another day. I won't get too much into it, but I'll just say there are times where it got really difficult, and there are times I sat back and I was just like, I'm putting everything I have into this. It's still not really getting anywhere. Um, I know I'm good enough, but like, why isn't this like, like why isn't this where I want it to be? And um, I had to reflect a lot, and I, I looked back, and like one of the things that kept me going, honestly, was Dre. It was probably one of them. Um, he he. I looked at it like this way. I was like, you know what? How many guys? How many people told him no? How many people said it's not possible? The deck stacked against you. Accept things for how they are, and, and go, go golf or something like that. And I was just like, you know, if he can do it. Like, no one's trying to punch me in the face. I can learn how to video edit. Like, I can learn how to do stuff. So I'm just going to keep at it. And I got his respect. He appreciates what I do. And you know what? That's good enough for me. If I never have one other person on the show, that's okay. But uh, I made a difference for him. He he, he, he said, it, you know, like, hey, you know what you're talking about. Keep at it. Keep going. And that was good enough for me. So I did. And, uh, you know, that he's a big reason of why I'm still around. I have in in my growth and in all this and part of my enjoying this fight camp it's still hard i still have my moments of spikes and stuff but i've realized like i said i want my main goal is i'm a protagonist that's my my personality type i want to talk about my team more i want to pave the way for some of these people and get it and dre is one who is at the top of my list and he is motivating i mean you know you've heard a story about how he lost his eye like that's his story to tell but i mean he essentially saved somebody and lost his eye and because of that the bureaucrats and things like that have punished him so much along the lines and he shows up all the time i can't think of a time when dre hasn't shown up and i'm not saying like, like he's always happy and whatever sure. he's, he's a human he struggles but he has definitely put the work in day after day and when people are saying no you're never gonna fight on this big stage because our lawyers won't let us or or let you or you're just too much of a hazard. And what happens if you lose your other eye? And I'm like, I always want to like smack people when they say that. They're like, when they say to them, like, well, you don't know what it's going to be like if you have to, if something happens to your other eye. Like, if anybody knows, it's him. So if I have five minutes of fame in any of this, I want to highlight people like that. I'd rather talk about them all day long. Dre being there. Somebody give him that next level shot. Like, he's he's amazing. You know what's crazy about it? And I, I, I uh, it's funny because I was talking to Dre about this just a few days ago, I was just like, why did people give you so much crap about your eye? There's that guy in Bellator, Newell, who's got one hand, and he fights, and he destroys people, but no one talks about that. Well, it's the yep. same issue, right? And he was like, I guess I never really thought about it that way. I'm like, uh, yeah, it's the exact same thing. You see him, he's in there, he's getting a license, no problem, why can't you? And, you know, I know Dre is good enough. I know that uh, his last bout didn't go the way that he wanted it to, but that guy's all about perseverance. He's going to get better from this, and 
I promise for people who are listening to this, like you're going to see him somewhere. Like he's he's just too good. He really is. He is. And and yet again, I feel like the the heart of the path is put in front of you. It's just getting you ready for the next thing. And and as we've been kind of repeating, it is I know that better than most. You know, I know the the ugly side of stuff and I've spent most of my time in the trenches. But that one moment that you get up there for, I mean, it was there and, and God's getting you ready. Like a, my personal faith, whatever you fate, whatever, even in the bad times you are being pruned and you were being shined and you're getting ready for whatever is to come next, what, when it may be or form. So, you know, I think Dre is an amazing sign of, of perseverance and, and he's grown a lot just, you know, as a, as a human and a person. And um, I think God was just, and he still is just getting him ready for that next level. And he's going to be amazing when it comes out. Well, you've also persevered. Like I mm-hmm. like people don't know. Like you didn't win a fight from 2015 to 2019. You didn't win a fight. Like I so. Know. So Four like years. like I that's a fight. that's a long time, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a really long time, and you did it. And I have to ask, what did it finally feel like when you finally won? Like what did it feel like? Like were, was there like a certain? What was it like? Did you even enjoy that moment? Like this is before the Bellator <laughs> fight because you like reinvented yourself as a fighter and actually went on a win streak like tell me about the first one though like what was going through your mind was it just relief were, were you happy a combination it, of both it, it felt like i mean i and i will always remember i think i remember all the, the emotions through it you know i'm an emotional like very extreme person and so sure. i i emotions are my memory but um it felt like yes Finally, because for so many of those losses and stuff, when I just didn't even show up or didn't do it and you leave and you're like, why? Like, why did I, why did all that stuff? It wasn't you. So it was like, when I finally won, I was like, yes, that was me. Like I got to be aggressive and strong. And that was that it was just felt right. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, it was against a tough opponent too. And so it was just like, yes, yes. All those moments I left the cage thinking, no, no, that's not right. It was to get me there, but when I finally got that spot again, I'm like, yeah, I've put in all these years of hard work. This is what should happen. I think what makes just the sport of mixed martial arts so intense is because in baseball, right, you lose a heartbreaker of a game. You lose a game. Guess what? There's a game next week. No big deal. In fighting, something doesn't go your way, like Dre. Dre's fight didn't go his way. That happened in the summer, and he doesn't know when he's going to fight again. He doesn't know no. when he's going to have another opportunity. It, it could be tomorrow. Like, someone could drop out because it's Friday. Like, hey, uh, someone got Rona. Are you on weight? Can you make the weight? Do you want to fight? Okay, cool. Or he might not get another chance until, like, after the holidays. You just never know. And I think yeah. that's the hardest part about it is, like, you don't know you don't have something lined up necessarily right away and it's just kind of like this waiting period and that's I, brutal. I say that that in this sport like that part of the aspect that that weighs on you so much is really hard because there are times like even after just my most recent fight i fought in september and thankfully like i won everything but i was like yet again it was a year before i had fought last and we not that we hadn't tried we did so i was kind of like resigned like okay i got this in got some dust stuff. I'm good. It's going to be a little while. I'll make it through the holidays. I'm traveling with my other teammate out to Shanna, out to the UFC. We got this. And then it just like, Bellator just opened up and it, you know, I was actually looking for fights for some of our other people and it, the last opportunity for me. So I threw my name out there. It was like, eh, it's a crap shoot. I got a losing record. Who knows? Or whatever. Um, and they said, yes. And so you're like, oh, okay, I'm in, you know, and, and was so this for Lareda or is this for see. Hardy? This is for Lareda for this fight. Like, I mean, I fought in September. Um, and then I was like, okay, you know, I got this fight, thank God, but it probably is going to be a while. It's just how things go. And then here we are, November, I get to fight again. So it's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, before we it. talk about this fight, I want to talk about Heather Hardy because, and the reason why I want to talk about this is because I see a lot of, I see a lot of similarities between you going into this fight against Valerie and then the one with Heather Hardy. Now that was about at that point in time i had to go back i had to watch that fight again and by the way going back and finding the bellator fights that's a pain in the butt like there is no like bellator fight pass and there should be so scott coker please make that up it would make my life a lot easier because finding some of these (laughs) fights it's hard but i did good perseverance (laughs) i exactly uh i won't don't ask me how i got it but i got it It, now there might be chinese subtitles on it but i got it that's what matters (laughs) i rewatched it and just like 
putting myself in your shoes and just like closing my eyes and visualizing myself as you. You're on a win streak. Like you fought like six weeks before. You don't even have a full camp. You have an opportunity to fight Heather Hardy. She is, for people who don't know who she is, she is a very reputable boxer. It, she was Clarissa Shields before Clarissa Shields. Exact same thing. You go in there, it's at Madison Square Garden, and like like the hair on my arms just stands up thinking about it. The stage cannot be bigger. <laughs> You're fighting against uh, somebody who is internationally known. Uh, she's a very famous boxer trying her hand at mixed martial arts. She's really scary. And there's you. And like you come in and like you're fighting in Knoxville of like six weeks before. And then like you're in Madison Square Garden. So I have to like stop there and ask just the build up to that fight, all the pressers that you had to do, the photo shoots, like getting to New York City, all that. Was that like, tell me about what that experience was like, like just before the fight, like getting there and then until you walk that walk out, what was, what was that like? Cause that must've been an out of body experience. It was, I mean, and, and thankfully yet again, I'm very blessed with lots of really talented fighters at our gym and stuff. And um, I've had an opportunity to you know be backstage at the UFC with some of our fighters before and experience a lot of that. So it wasn't brand new on, on those levels. But as far as, yeah, for me, and he said Madison Square Garden, I mean, as you walk past, it's like the world's most famous arena. I mean, that's written all over the place. And right. you look at the people that perform there and stuff, and you're like, me? Like, God, what? Like, what did I do? And and those are the ones that just are, are opening. And to be honest, in those things, I think I've performed my best because when they're like, you're so in the moment, mm -hmm. and that's what flow is all about. That's what being there is, is, is like, taking it all in and breathing and, and being aware of everything that's, that's going around you in that and, and being able to focus in the moment. So it was phenomenal. It was great. I tell, you know, this one story though, it, like I said, when you're living in this fight camp out on the edge, I can be elated, but like you spike so hard because you're just, you're ready to go hunt. You're ready to pounce. You're ready for this. Like that's what your body's supposed to do. So you're not calm ever, even in your sleep. But um, I remember being there and like training and everything was all about her. And rightly so, like she was, a, she is a phenomenal boxer and, and mm -hmm. scary. And every interview I did was like beforehand, Heather Hardy is amazing and she's going to knock you out and she breaks people's faces. How do you feel about this? And I remember there was like one day I did like four interviews in a row and you're like, how many times have I told my face was going to get broken <laughs> before right. like it kind of gets to you. Um, but anyhow, we just put our head down and it was like very similar to this. Like, what do I have to lose? I mean, I know I am good. Um, yeah. I, you know, I've worked through lots of stuff and so I got, I can just go out there and do me and it, it'll be good. But I remember riding the elevator when we were there, it was, you know, right before we're about to make weight and we just gotten a workout in. I was dead tired. It's New York city, great hotel. All these people are getting on, getting off, talking about where they're going to go eat. And I was like, just sitting in the back of the elevator in my sweats covered up drenched. I'm like, but why, why can't I just go on a normal vacation? Like all these people, like, right. <laughs> like, why do I have to get a cage? And then it was just like, like the voice came into my head. It was God. It was like, because you get to fight at Madison square garden. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. So that's what it's about. So yeah, you, you know, went... I'm one in a very fraction of people who've gotten to, to do that. So it was, it was wonderful. It was like, honestly, um, and this isn't an exaggeration. I'm very curious to go back. I, I would be really curious what like the lines were for that. It probably looked like a boxing line, like, <laughs> or, uh, or you look at like some of cyborgs fights. I know obviously you're fighting on her undercard, but it's like, like when she fights anybody, it's like, you know, plus, you know, <laughs> like her opponent is like plus 1 million underdog and yeah. i'm just like oh my god and i bet it was like that for you but you, yeah you, you go out there you prove yourself you get a tko um like people are looking at you like oh my gosh who'd this person come from but at the same time it's just like i've always been here you just never gave me a chance so like was it kind of like a like you were very humble in all your post interviews you're very complimentary of her you were like yeah she's a she's a beast, but I've been doing this for a long time. And, um, now that that's been like a couple years in your rearview mirror, like, was there ever a point in time where you're like, 
man, I told you guys, but you didn't want to listen. Like, is, is there ever, like, do you ever kind of, like, want to rub, like, some of the media's, like, face in it? Like, you know, like, you never, gave, none of you guys ever gave me a chance. Like, I don't know, for me, I'm petty. I think it, I'd have a chip on my shoulder a little bit. Well, if I have, and I have, sat back and self-examined myself a lot of times, I can't really blame the media at times. I, yet again, in my extreme personality, which is one thing that I'm working on and being able to narrow and whatever, I am hit or miss a lot of the time. So when I am on, I think I am on, I'm good. And if you, if, and, and that's obviously one of my goals is to come into this next fight and, and do that. And, and the Heather Hardy fight, I think, showed that. You know, I made some mistakes, but I think it showed it. But the other times when I just go in too lax or too emotionally not there, I just fall over, you know? And so if you look at my films, I don't blame people for saying sometimes, especially if you only watch one or two, you do a little bit of research. They're like, oh, look, she just fell over. Oh, look, she got knocked out in two seconds. Oh, look, like, yeah, I don't show a whole lot. So, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a wild card at times and I'm working on not doing that. And I really hope to show that in the next one. So, no, it did feel good to stand up there and be like, yeah, look, I did it. I, I knew I could, you know, I just had to show up. But people don't know that. They don't know me. And yet again, that theme of surround yourself with people who do and we're going to bring it out you is is key i look at it this way though this is the fight game like in a football game you could like any given sunday is what people always say like any given sunday anything's possible but in fighting it's like even more so because like all it takes is one punch yeah like you could not see something go like it's the ones you don't see that's the ones that knock people out or that's where people get in trouble and like on any given day some crazy stuff can happen like fighting is the most unpredictable sport that there is and everybody's got a chance if you're a professional athlete and you're in a cage against somebody like that's what i mean that's the reason why they call it a puncher's chance right like anything is possible in there and Never, never assume that every anything will be a cakewalk when it comes to fighting because anything's possible. You proved that when you beat Hardy, and mm -hmm. I think Hannah Guy proved that recently. Hannah Guy is a freak, and uh, mm -hmm. Hannah, like you need—I know you have a fight coming on, but you need to be on my show. I've been trying to get you on my show for a minute. Mm -hmm. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I like, I like Hannah, um, but mm -hmm. Hannah went into this fight, and I won't say. I don't know if it was quite as bad as you, but like she was definitely coming in. People were not giving her respect. She's no. going up against uh, Valerie Lareda. I have some thoughts on her. I'll get to that in a second. But nobody was giving her a chance. Hannah dominates her, smashes her up really, really good. I think the suits and Bellator kind of sat back and were like, well, shit, that wasn't supposed to happen. Right. Uh, there, that, that's a girl that she's very young. She's very talented. Um, that's one of the starlets that they're trying to build up. I think that's safe to say. But when you look, I know you've seen the Hannah guy fight. I know you've seen Hannah fight mm -hmm. her. What were your thoughts on that? Um, no, I mean, you know, I listen to my coach first and foremost. He watches film relentlessly for all of us and does a great job breaking stuff down and looking at things. And and just you know, one of the things that I have struggled with in the past is being patient, you know, and I'm especially doing well and like not fighting on things because I just, I just get excited. And uh, I just thought she showed a really good uh, pose and poise and, and just put her head down and did what was supposed to be done, you know, like knowing that uh, Valerie was going to come out hard and wants to knock you down, wants to whatever. And you talk about a fight being able to be turned around or ended in one second when you got power punchers. It takes, I mean, I, once again, stuff I've been through, I got knocked out in one of my fights in New, in New York. And with just that, my opponent just swung wild. I had my hand just a little bit too low and was out. Mm -hmm. So she, Hannah did a good job of, of just focusing on what she was supposed to do and not getting ahead of herself, not getting into it, but, but just being hurt. So yeah, I think she did a really good job of that. I look at Valerie and uh, for the record, um, I, I don't know anything about her personally. Um, not at all. Maybe she's a nice person. I, I don't know. Maybe, I, I have no idea. But this is what I see. She's 5'4", um, which is about normal for... Is, is this at 25 or 35? It is at 25, yeah. Okay, this that's why I wanted to ask, because I know you're typically yeah. at 35. I assumed you were going to have to cut, so that's why I asked. I've actually been mostly at 125. The only times I've gone up to 30 or 35 or whatever is because my opponents really couldn't make weight. Not every time. Got it. Um, 
that Heather Hardy fight, like she couldn't make weight. So we had just made weight. It was one of those things where like, oh, we made weight the night before. We're good. They called me like, she, she's having a hard time. So we bumped it up a little bit. The next fight, the Laura fight, we were going to go to 125, but the athletic commission didn't want us to cut that much weight. So they bumped us up. Um, okay. And so then my next fight was at 125 a year ago. And then this past one was at 35. Um, it was just, we we're both around the same size. We we're like, why, why make ourselves it. up? Let's just well, go ahead and- I think it's. I think that's even better. I think that actually puts you at an advantage. Um, Valerie is, you know, she's a black belt taekwondo type. She likes to kick people a lot. Um, but I bet you, and she'll never admit this, for this fight, she'd love to trade bodies with you. You're very <laughs> tall. Um, she's got a 62 and a half inch reach. So um, that... I'm not saying it's not possible, but like when I look at all that stuff, it's like you'd almost kind of expect her to even go down to 15. I mean, just because her reach, she's not very big. She doesn't have a, she's not like tall and and slender. She's kind of like, uh, she's kind of got like a, I don't know if stocky is the right word, but like she's very muscular is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, 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 she's strong. And she's got curves and she's a little powerhouse. And to be fair, that is one thing about this sport that I do love too. It's like I have some advantages, but so does she. I mean, there are times when usually it comes to the ground more when people are shorter, like they get on me and I'm like, get off me, you're little. I just can't breathe to get that because they're just so compact like that. So that is that is typically where they have that advantage. And and so I'm not crossing off by any of the not that you are, but um to to go into it, I've done that before as well. Been like, oh, this person's little, and then they've Mm -hmm. like totally destroyed me <laughs> like, right. oh who was it that my husband's in your right the fought second she was actually in bellator too ruth um uh, becky ruth becky yeah like so that was my first pro loss and i went in there kind of with that that thought too like oh she's little or she's whatever and she tore me up because i was just like ah i'm gonna well, keep her up but she just got on the inside and so I got, let well, she, learn. <laughs> she's strong and and she's good she is, she is good i think valerie yeah. is um i think she's good but i just being honest i don't think she's all that I don't like I think she's been built up a lot. Um, she likes to kick. That's all fantastic. But all those kicks don't help you with some, if you're taken down the ground. If you're taken yeah. down the ground and you can't hip escape like Hannah did that. Hannah got her down the ground. And guess what? All your all your Rex Quando does not help you down there unless <laughs> unless you have other things up your sleeve. And when I look at her, what's also interesting with her being on the shorter side, she's going to try to look for space, right? Like mm-hmm. she likes to keep the distance and yeah. for smaller people, typically they have to be the aggressors and go after you. Whereas you're typically at given that advantage, like, well, do I want to take center? Or do I want to be on the outside? And it just really depends on how you're feeling or whatever your game plan is. But I, for her, I think that's really, I, it's just not something I'm used to seeing all that often. Like that, those short compact people are usually in your face, like Daniel yeah. Kennedy, and they want to take you down. They want to punch you. And you just don't typically see them wanting to create space. So when you look at that, and I don't want to ask you too many questions about your game plan, but you know she's going to try to kick you. Like, that's obvious. Yeah. She's going yeah. to try to kick you 100%. <laughs> and this is Coach Tyler talking. <laughs> Take it for what it's worth. I'm a guy that sits in his basement. But it's like, I'm going to catch one of those kicks, and we're going down the ground. And your Rex Kwon Do is not going to help you when you get down there. I'm going to smash your face in when you're down on the ground. <laughs> that would be my game plan. Uh, but I want to pause there. I don't want to ask you about yours. We'll wait and we'll see what that looks like here in a couple of weeks. But like when you look at Valerie, what are some things that you think that she does well? And what are some things that you think you do better than her that, that you have an advantage over her on? Well, clearly the kicks and stuff are, and her punches and, and, you know, she's been doing that for a long time. So she's got that going for her and she is aggressive. You can tell she comes out hungry every single time. So I think that is, um, and I, that comes with being a kid, so to speak. She's not a kid. Obviously she's a young, oh, beautiful young woman, but, um, newer and she's got that good energy. So, I mean, that's hard to fight when you've been in the game for a long time. Sometimes that's, that's something you got to work with like I've done this a lot more I've done this whatever um and making sure you stay hungry for it um so that's part of it but in that kind of same thing like I have done this more I have done whatever I've lost more I've won more um I've got just more of my my kind of pouch right now so right now I think she's got great power um and great stand-up so she really has that going for it that's no secret 
Um, and mine though, I think is I've just been through a lot and I've learned a lot and I know how to take power shots. I've been knocked out by some, but I also have stood up with people like Heather Hardy who are known for literally like traveling the world and blasting people and destroying them. So I faced that before. So, you know, hands up, protect your body well, react good, you know, without being the game plan stuff, but I am long and my stand up is pretty good too. And so, um, yeah, I think, I think it's I think it's great. And, uh, you know, looking at this from the D gen perspective that I typically do, I'm going to bet on you for this one. And here's why um, it would be one. Re it would be one thing if you were 24 years old, 25 years old, and you're taking a fight against like a 22 year old because the, the age difference is it's it, it doesn't matter at that point. It's it's negligible. <laughs> yeah. Right. But in this case, like especially when it comes to the fighting uh, space, it's like. We, we typically often look at age as a bad thing. Like, it's immediately like, oh, like, oh, you're 37, you're 38 years old. Eh, that's a bad thing, right? That's not good. But it, you also look at it, and it's just like time and time again, when you see a starlet like that put up against somebody who's been in the game for a long time, things don't always go according to plan. Uh, Valerie does not have a lot of experience. I'm not taking anything away from her. I'm not saying she's not dangerous, because she is. But she doesn't have that experience that you do. And you see that, like, when Anthony Smith fought Jimmy Crute, that's a very good example. He's a young, hungry kid. And when I had, I was fortunate enough to have Anthony Smith on the show not that long ago, and he was just like, it felt like a man fighting a boy. That's <laughs> it, Those are his words, the, not mine. And he said yeah, that, yeah. and he's just like, I like Jimmy a lot. I think he's got a lot of potential, but I've been in this game for a very long time. And, but, like, I've just been in this game for so much longer. There are levels to this. And... um you know, I'm not surprised at all. And everyone thought I was going to lose, which I thought was funny. And uh, so I made money off of that. And um, just look at it. I think you have a lot of things going for you. What I like most about it is there's no pressure on you at all. Like, I hope you don't feel pressured at all. Like, do you feel well, pretty lax and, and, and ready to roll? Yeah, I mean, overall, I do. To say there's no pressure. I mean, once again, you're on the big stage. You know, my last performance there. It, it, the pressure that I put on is is more of that kind of stuff. Like, not focusing on the negative once mental skills push it there, but it's, it's not really about my opponent as much as it is about me. Like I want to pave the path for my team more. I want to be a gym that they can call on. And right now, sometimes it is to be the underdog, but I want to show that we are more, we, you know, you know my husband started in a 10, five, 10 foot garage or something, but we are in a 40,000 square foot building now over the years. And we've worked our way up. We're not the scrappy little team. Um, so I feel maybe pressure because I want to represent my team well. I want to honor all the sacrifices. I mean, they're out there right now coaching and teaching so I can be here talking to you. Um, so I put that pressure in that sense to, to, to do good for them. Well, you're going to, I know you're going to get on the stage and regardless of the outcome of the fight, I like your chances personally. Um, I, I'm like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll throw like 10 bucks down on you. Why not? Let's see what happens. Yes. I like <laughs> You know what? Because that a ten dollar wager there—that's a steak dinner. I, I could probably take my wife to Ruth's Chris afterwards because I get it. I get it. We are redoing our building, doing kind of stuff. A dollar is a is a dollar these days. So I I appreciate ten dollars. So well, thanks for that amount of confidence. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it because. But I look at it this at, at this space in all seriousness. I sincerely believe you've already won, no matter what the outcome of the fight is. Getting this opportunity again, it shows that you're very respected in the sport. People do respect you as a mixed martial artist. Like you've been through a lot, and I think it, your story is a really good reminder for people to like, no matter how hard it gets, see it through and find that motivation. Whether it's your faith, whether it's your spouse, or whether it's uh, a hamburger, I don't know. But you know, you just got to find that faith, whatever that is. You have to find that thing that keeps you going. Um, and I promise, it is worth it. Just stick with the grind. It is worth it. You will get rewarded at the end. I know that it takes an army. I know you have a lot of people that you probably want to shout out and thank. So I want to give you, Taylor, that opportunity to do that. Thank you so much. And actually, I did write it down somewhere and I have like my banner kind of thing. But the biggest ones that I want to say, um, like I said, I really hope to pave the way. Dre is one of those. Somebody give him a shot. You know, like I said, I know he got, a, got caught in this last one. Okay, that happened the one before. You know, he's he's just showing up and, and done everything. So I hope people look at him and, and do that. We got Slick Nick Gertz. We've got James Adcock. We've got a lot of these people who've been here for a long time. Like, look at our people and, and bring them through. Um, you know, Emily King, Christina Adcock, 
Rick or we've got um, Olivia Parker, you know, people who, who are going through stuff. And I really want to, to have people take a serious look at them. On top of that, one of the things you'll see on my, my shorts and or my top and my walkout banner is the name Noah Maddox and Dominic. Um, this might make me cry a little bit. Noah's um, got a second, he's a six year old. He's in the hospital right now, the second bout of cancer. And he's struggling to just find joy in it and has to fight all that again. And it's really a, 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 taking a toll on their family and they're all fighters in other ways. So I just saying his name out there, go donate blood in his name. Look at my stuff if you do anything. Um, they have a um, a nonprofit that helps with kids with cancer, have pajamas that are comfortable from at the hospital and stuff, go donate to those things. Um, you'll see it on all my walkout stuff. I'd really appreciate it if you just even went and liked their page or gave them some sort of love there and lift up their spirits. Because when he's sitting in the hospital going through some of these hardest treatments right now, um, and then his brothers and his mom and dad, I can't even imagine them. So if I'm going to take some time, it's going to be to say that. And then clearly, thank you to my team, my coach, Frankie Bathia. He's my strength and conditioning coach. I couldn't be where I am without without him too. And then all those people on my banner oh, i'm gonna forget somebody if i start laying off because i forgot to pull it up before i walked into this meeting sorry my that's man. okay um but yeah you'll see them and, and they're all people who've supported me and been here for a long time for me so thank you to all of them please go like them on facebook go find them on on instagram um support the people who support us when we got nothing <laughs> it's an honor talking to you and i already you know my my inner soccer mom is gonna say it again. I think you've already won, no matter what happens, <laughs> no matter what the outcome. It's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity uh, to get exposure for your gym, exposure for your teammates, and then exposure for good causes, like you just mentioned. So, uh, yes. Taylor, we'll go ahead and um, I'll link all the things you want me to in the description for this. So just send it to me. And uh, good luck on your fight. I know you're gonna do well. Thank you, sir. And I look forward to coming back and talking to you, hopefully after my victory, but you're you can, doing an amazing job too. Oh. So thank you for this platform. We Fighters need this to get their names out there. So without you and, and working hard, putting yourself out there, it's not doable either.